Hi, welcome to another Bible study here at Friendship Mission Church for the Homeless and the Poor in Montgomery, Alabama. Pastor and founder Vince Rosado. My name is Minister Warren Rudd. I'm a licensed minister by my Bishop Jimmy A. Ellis III out of Victory Christian Center of Philadelphia. Uh, website is www.vccphilly.org. Tonight's message is going to be a great message for you to listen to. I'm going to be talking about you must go back to the place you were stoned. It is a good thing about how Paul rose after being stoned and went back into the same place that he was stoned and preached the gospel. So tonight's message, I want you to sit back and enjoy. As I always say, there you go, right there. Mm -hmm. God bless you. And go to Acts chapter 14. Acts 14. I just want to get you prepared there. And we're going to pray it in, okay? So let's go to Acts 14. Uh, let us pray. Father, we just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for the word that's going to come forth, Father. Open up the mind's eye, illuminate them, uh, help them to understand through your Holy Ghost which you're trying to do in their lives. I ask these things as I decrease and let you increase. Let me walk on the way of your word that I may be able to establish, build, and guide and correct the men and women of God in righteousness. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Let the house say amen. amen. All right, tonight's sermon, um, what I'm going to be talking about tonight is you must go back to the place you were started. Okay, I'll say it again. You must go back to the place you were stoned. Now, how many of you have ever been stoned before? Anybody know what stoning is in the Bible? Well, in today's time, a lot of stones are words that are thrown at you and circumstances that come your way. People can say negative words to you. People can say unhealthy things to you. People can throw stones at you covering your sin or your issue. Instead of helping you, they say you'll never be nothing. <laughs> Uh, instead of lifting you up and, and getting you to a place of prayer, they say, forget you, you're nothing but a bomb. Pow! See? See the stones? You ain't nothing but alcoholic. Pow! You ain't nothing but homeless. Pow! They just throwing stones. Amen? Amen? But they throw them stones and not looking at their own situation and what Amen. God has done for them in their life. Okay? Amen. So, when God gave me this message, I said, you know what, Lord, I've been stoned a few times. And we're going to see how many people in the Bible uh, had to deal with stoning and why stoning had occurred. So I know, now y'all can relate to what I'm saying about it, okay? This is called revelation of the word, amen? This is when you know you done got in prayer and you done sat out there and said, okay, this is a great story in the Bible. It becomes uh, a relative in your life. Well, how did this happen to that person? It may be a little stone, but I know there were stones that were thrown at me that hurt me emotionally, okay? That hurt me physically. That caused me to act out in ways that I shouldn't have acted out. Amen? So but let's look at Paul. Let's look at the story starting at verse 1 in chapter 14 of Acts. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews and so spake that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. That means both the saved and unsaved. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brother. So then that means you got some people in the house that are talking to make uh, talking for other people to stir them against you. Me, I think the other day we were talking about uh, there were six things God hated in the seventh one, the abomination unto the Lord, and that's sowing discord among the brother. That means you're causing another brother. How many of you know what instigation is? You're instigating a fight. You're causing two people to fight, and you're just standing back. Yeah. Amen. You're sowing discord. That's an abomination unto God. Verse 3. Long time, therefore, to both they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony. See that? They gave their testimony what God had done for them. They gave their testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by the hand. Why do we have when I bring the message about signs and wonders? Amen. Verse 4. But the multitude of the city was what? Divided. And part held with the Jews, I'm on their side. And the part with the apostles, I'm on their side. Ain't that what we got in the doctrine of the churches today and all these divisions with denominations? Well, I'm Presbyterian. I'm a Presbyterian. I'm not a denomination. I'm God in Christ. I'm, I'm a Sunday of God. I'm not, you know, all that division for no reason. The devil played a good trick on Christianity. 
first thing he said was, I'm going to make them believe I don't exist. And then the second thing he said was, I'm going to divide them in their beliefs. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Verse 5. And when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews with their rulers to use them despitefully and to do what? To stone them. They were aware of it and fled unto Lystra and debris, cities of Lyconia, and unto the region that lies around about. Now I might not be able to pronounce all these cities correctly, but y'all get my point. And verse 7, and there they preached the what? Good news, the gospel. And there sat a certain man, a Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The name, the same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, stand upright on your feet. And he leaped and walked. Hallelujah. Amen. He leaped and walked just by that faith. Amen. Verse 11. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying, in the speech of the Lyconian, so that means they were speaking a different language. Mm -hmm. The gods, notice that lowercase g gods, whenever you see lowercase g gods, that is idolatry. That is always false gods. Our God in the Bible is always a capital G. So that means this place was worshiping, worshiping in idolatry. Got me? All right. The gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. So they try to look at Paul and say, you're a god because you healed this god. Amen. Pay close attention. Verse 12. And they called Barnabas, Ju Ju Jupiter, and Paul, and Mercurius, because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates, and would have done sacrifice with the people. Verse 14. Which when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard of, they ripped their clothes. Yeah, when the Jews ripped their clothes, sometimes they indicated that man, you died, you died. That was a painful thing for them. Amen? Amen? They ripped their clothes and ran in among the people crying out and saying, Sirs, why do you think these things? We are also our men of like passion with you. We ain't nothing but brothers like you. Why are you doing this to us? Don't worship us. Amen? And preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities unto the living God. Now you see it's a capital G. Mm -hmm. Turn unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein. Verse 16. <laughs> Who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not himself without a witness. See? He left not himself without a witness. Who's the witness today? Us. Tell what God did for you. Amen? In that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these sayings, a uh, scarce restraint they, the, they the people that they had not done sacrifice unto them. And there came there certain Jews. Pay attention. There came there certain Jews from where? Antioch and Iconium, who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul. So that means they persuaded the people and said, these guys ain't right. Y'all need to not listen to them. Y'all better pay attention to us. Amen. They persuaded the people. How many times you know you got something in your spirit and somebody come along and makes you question it? And you knew deep down in your spirit, the Lord told you that whether you knew the background, whether you knew the knowledge of it, whether you knew the history of it or whatever, it was in your spirit that it was right. Amen. But somebody come along and begin to throw genealogy on you, philosophy on you, history on you. And you say, wait a minute, maybe you're right. You switched up. Amen. Faith is the substance of things hope for and the evidence of things not seen. Amen. Let's read that again. And there came there certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul, drew, drew him out of the city. And they stole me and kicked him out of the city. Kicked him out of town. Supposing he had been what? Dead. dead. How be it as his disciples stood around about him, he rose up. Now there you go. The saints got around him and he had to pray. And he rose up from the dead. Hello. 
He was dead after being stoned. Got up. Come on, y'all. Y'all ain't hearing me in here. Got up. Because the saints were unified in agreement. We ain't going to let our brother die. I don't care how many stones were thrown. We're going to get in there with our brother and pray for him. Amen. We're going to stand with him. Amen. So, <laughs> he rose up and came into the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas to the priest. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. And that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Now watch this. That guy, Paul, got right back up and went to the same place. They killed him. Now you know that's got to be bold. Bold. Mm -hmm. yeah, they said, I'm going right back in town. How many need to go back to the place you were stopped? How many need to go back to the place where they said you never won't be nothing? You ain't nothing but a kind. You've been in jail. You can't get this job because you got a record. Oh, come on now. You passed the piss. You didn't pass the pee test. Come on. Go get clean. Come back and pee again. Come on. How many places have you been stoned and refused to go back because you're too embarrassed? I can't go back to my family because what? They call me this. They don't like me. But show them the new you. Go back to the place you were stoned. Go back to the place they talked about you, gossiped about you, said you won't be nothing. Amen. I did. Come on now. Prove them what God can do. Show them what God can do. Because God can raise you up from the dead. Come on now. Hello. Your condition ain't dead. You ain't dead. Get around some saints and let them pray for you and watch you rise and go back to the place you were stoned. Amen. Let's talk. Let's look at some of the places, some of the things that happened, Paul. Go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. It's going down a different road. God, boy, I tell you. 2 Corinthians, chapter 11. And I like Paul's example because Paul was something. Paul's amazing. I don't know if I can do with Paul. You know what I mean? Paul been through some mess, y'all. He really has. Let's look at verse 25 of this and watch Paul's resume of what he's been through. Let's go up. No, let's go up to verse 23. And are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors, more in abundance, in stripes above measure. You know that stripes mean he been whipped. Forty stripes saved one, just like Jesus. Uh -huh. In prison, more frequent. Come on. Mm -hmm. In deaths, often. Mm -hmm. Watch this, verse 24. Of the Jews, five times received our 40 stripes, saved one. Let's just say that. Paul, man, what? What? Whipped. Beaten up. Watch verse 25. Three times was I beaten with rods. Mm -hmm. Come on, y'all. Y'all think y'all met them something? Listen to this fast. <laughs> and he wouldn't give up. <laughs> right? Three times beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. There you go. Right? Three times I suffered shipwreck. At night and the day I have been in the deep. In journeys often, in pearls of waters, in pearls of what? Robberies. In pearls by my own countrymen, my own homeboy. Come on, brothers, sisters. Amen. In pearls by the heathen, in pearls in the city, in pearls in the wilderness, in pearls in the sea, in pearls among thought. Brothers who claim they walk with me and agree with me and believe that Jesus is God. But then what sort of record will play? Just let them talk long enough. It will play. I was talking to you at the, um, I was talking to Lamar today, and I was saying, you know, we need to get to a place that God's essence is so big, who said he, anything you say is wrong? His essence is too big. You know what I mean? But what are the fundamentals of salvation? That's what you need to ask people. Well, brother, you want to give me a history? You want to give me a background? What are the fundamentals of salvation? What is the fundamentals of redemption? Can anybody here name me five things that will take you to get saved? Or Jesus said that's an indication of you being saved? Answer that for me. Forget whether an angel had wings. Forget if Satan fell from heaven like a lightning bolt. Forget if the rock talk. Forget whether animals speak. Can you tell me how to be saved? Because my relationship may be deeper than yours. Amen. Can you pray for me and talk to the Father? Do you ever pray and talk to the Father? Amen. 
Because I know he revealed some things to me that he may not reveal to you because my situation ain't like yours. Hello. But I can tell you by heart what it takes. You know what it is? You must know that Jesus is God. One. You must know that he was born of a virgin. Two. You must know that he shed his blood for you on the cross. Three. You must also know that he will return. Four. Amen. Amen. And one is finally. He's God. I don't care whether they don't let women preach. I don't care whether they don't believe there's any more apostles. I don't care whether they speak in tongues. I don't care if they roll on the ground, fall on the ground. All I care about is because when we get to heaven, we can ask God, but you stuff right. And he'll say, boom. So agree to disagree and move on. Thank you. None of that stuff is a prerequisite to your salvation. Thank you. But if you ain't talking to God, you ain't got nothing to say anyway. Amen. When the last time you talked to God, do you drop anything when somebody need prayer? And no matter what you're doing, hey amen, this brother need prayer. Well, man, I'm, I'm shaving right now. No, I'm going out there with the shaving cream on. Amen. Because your relationship with God should be more important than anything else. Amen. 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 Let's look at what stoning means. Stoning, stoning, or there's another word for it that they call in our today's time. It's lapidation. It's called lapid lapidation. All right? Refers to a form of capital punishment whereby <laughs> an organized group throws stones at a convicted individual until the person dies. So it's called lapidation. It's actually used in the Middle East a lot, but we won't get there in a minute. Stoning has been used throughout history in a number of places, both in a form of community justice and also as a judicial form of capital punishment. The practice is referred to in the Greek history as well as Christian, Jewish and Islamic texts in the Bible is often occurs or almost occurs to righteous people or as a result of mild action. So a lot of people get stoned on the righteous. Those who are trying to do the right thing or offending someone. Hello. Just because you said something. Kill it. Especially back in Ju Ju Judaism. Boy. They were stoning you if you said you was a prophet and it didn't come to you, you was dead. Amen. <laughs> and then you was dead. All right, let's look at the secular use. Matter of fact, I even went on the internet to look up stoning and found videos that they're still stoning people today over there. They will put you in a sheet, dig a hole, bury you in the ground, bury you in the ground up to your neck. And the majority of the time, guess who's in that ground? Women. Exactly. They, and then the whole town comes and throws stones at your head until you die. They actually had a video of it right there. Ain't nothing hidden no more. And she was either caught in adultery mm -hmm. right. or fornication, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And well, I was like, where the guy at? He was probably saying, hey, throwing the stone too. Mm -hmm. And they would do it over homosexuality. Mm -hmm. And they still do it today over there. Mm -hmm. They will bury you and stone you until you die. Mm -hmm. Amen? Secular use. Non-religious persons and secular governments almost never use lapidation as a form of punishment. It tends to be prescribed as a punishment for the religious over sexual crimes. Is that deep? The Bible and Judaism. In the Torah, the Torah of the Jews, which is contained in the Old Testament of the Christian Bible, and as such serves as a common religious reference, prescribes death by stoning for a long series of offense. Lately, watch this. I broke some of them down here. Here's one of them they would do for in the Old Testament. Touching Mount Sinai. Why God was giving Moses the Ten Commandments. That's in Exodus 19.13. An ox that gores someone to death should be stoned. Exodus 21.28. Breaking the Sabbath, and it says Sabbath, which is literally means to cease, is the weekly Sabbath or day of rest in Judaism, symbolizing the seventh day in Genesis after six days of creation. So if you worked on the Sabbath day, they would stone you. So if you were working on that day was Saturday, we call it Sunday today. If you were working, they would stone you, kill you. <laughs> but I like when Jesus came along, he said, if, if one of your sheep left a hundred, when you go after that, leave the 99 for one Sunday? You better know it, you better know it. Here's another reason why they were stoning you. Giving one seed, presumably one's offspring, to Molech, in other words, offering up to idolatry, is either the name of a god, lowercase g, or the name of a particular kind of sacrifice associated with fire. So they worship fire. And you could be stoned. That's under the Levitical law, Leviticus 20, verses 2 to 5. Have 
having familiar spirit. Now that blew me away when I found that because God even sent a familiar spirit upon Saul. Amen. It said it was even a lying spirit. So that says God controls it all, doesn't it? Having a familiar spirit or being a necromancer. You know what a necromancer is? Anybody know? Witchcraft. Okay. Necromancer or being you know, a wizard. Leviticus 20, 27. Cursing God. You know how easy we say, God, mm, today. But back then, you cussed God, you got stolen. Amen. Somebody heard you say something, uh, some blasphemous against God, you were killed. Engaging in idolatry, which we just talked about, or seducing others to do so. So if I talk to you and say, come on, brother, let's go worship this other God. Mm -hmm. I got stoned, and you got stoned with me. <laughs> Rebellion against Paris, and that's one of my favorites. Because they said the son was a drunken, stubborn, and glutton. And they would take him in front of the whole town and stone him to death. And that's probably what I always tell people. I think that's where they got it. When the father would tell me, he said, look, boy, I kid you, make another one look just like Amen. Amen. I brought you in this world, I take it out. Amen. And Israel yeah. didn't play that. If you were stubborn, blessing, and a joking, they took you and all the men would stone you. And he'd go back home with his wife making another one. Hello? Oh. We don't do that today. We say, time out. Amen. Yeah, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Getting married as though it, getting married as though a virgin, pretending to be a virgin and you're not. <laughs> uh huh. Talking about ain't nobody ever touched this. <laughs> First thing the priest would come down here and do before you got married, said, okay, you're still there. Go ahead. Because that was very important to you. Because it caused a covenant in marriage. Her hymen would break over you, causing a blood covenant in the marriage. See, people need to understand the blood covenant. That's why circumcision and marital bed was so important. <laughs> because of the blood covenant of God. All right, acting as though you were a virgin and were not. Sexual intercourse between a man and a woman engaged to another man. Both should be stoned. Mm -hmm. So if she says, I'm promised to Joe Blow, and you sleep with her, both of y'all getting killed. Look at what the Old Testament did. That's why I always tell people, when you first get born again, stay out of the Old Testament until God tells you to go there. Because you ain't got no relationship with Jesus yet. You can't tell me nothing to scare you half to death. Matter of fact, you would be like, I don't want that God. You ain't equipped enough to handle that. Get your relationship built up with Jesus. And when you see this stuff in the Old Testament, you'll be like, thank you, Lord. You won't be running from him, you'll be running to him. But how you going to say anything in your relationship ain't built up? I stayed in the New Testament for five years before I went to the old. In my private studies. You know why? Because God was ugly to me in the Old Testament. Amen. People were eating their babies. They were eating dove dookie. They were chopping off mooses. I mean, they were eating all kinds of stuff in family. Not me. And then God said, kill them all. What kind of God are you? But grace. But grace said, I love you and I forgive you for it all. You know, the law said, I got to keep it. But grace says, I'm going to love you through it. That's why angels follow you around because they don't understand redemption. Why did we deem that we mess up, we go straight to hell? What's with these humans? Amen. How many of y'all know y'all wouldn't even judge the angels? Anybody know they're going to judge angels? Stop worshiping angels. Look at that. Only two hands went up. Because y'all worship angels. Angels are not to be worshipped. You're going to judge them if you're a Christian. All right, put some pause there. Go to 1 Corinthians 6. Because <laughs> the first Corinthians church was, oh man, they act like buckwild fools. This is off my page. You want to get back to it? They act like buckwild fools. First, they were taking each other to be judged and going to the secular courts and all that. But I just want to read verse 3 just to prove to you that you want to judge angels. First Corinthians 6 3 says, Know you not that you will do what? Yes. Judge yes. angels. How much more things pertain to this life? Mm -hmm. You're going to judge angels, people. Amen. How I many just got enlightened by it? Stop worshiping angels. Amen. Amen. All right. Stoning in Islam is this, and I'm only going to cover it briefly. Stoning in Islam is this. The condemned is wrapped in a sheet, and I already told you part of that, and half buried. Muslims gather around the victim and throw stones at them, shouting, Allah is great. They're saying God is great by the killing. Stoning is a punishment for adultery and homosexuality in Islam. Okay? Yeah. Briefly covered. But let's go look at a woman. Let's go to John chapter 8. And I love this story. It's a familiar story. 
And I'm asking God to please bless me as I uh, get the revelation out of this. So go to John chapter 8. 